Welcome to the VB Toolbox. This is part five in our series and working with uh, Microsoft SQL Server uh, with Visual Basic.net. In this tutorial, we'll be picking up where we left off in part four, where I taught you how to delete records from your database. The purpose of this tutorial is to show you how to update records in your database, and we're just going to do a quick and simple demonstration of this if you want to follow along in your projects. Uh, I'll be continuing with the source code from the last demonstration. Um, you may wish to review those, uh, though I should be able to cover pretty much everything that you need if you're just starting your own app. So uh, let's go ahead and get started here. As a brief recap, I am using um, SQL Server Express 2008 and uh, you can download that freely from Microsoft's website. Uh, my database is SQL Apps, and I have a you know very basic forum structure for my tables, and uh, so that's what I will be using for these demonstrations. So in our last tutorial, we created in our SQL Control class. If you don't have that open, you can double-click it in your Solution Explorer. In our uh, SQL control class, we created a sub for data updates or running, um, executing non-query commands uh, against our database, such as insert, update, and delete. So we'll be using this. I'm going to go ahead and modify this in this tutorial to show you how to, cr um, <laughs> sorry, turn this sub into a function that returns a value. Uh, previously, we were collecting the change count um, that is returned from our uh, execute non query method from our SQL command and that returns an integer value so if we want to capture that and return it to our application so we can actually uh, sort of tailor the results to what we're doing say if we click delete member instead of just saying you know we up you know affected three records or one record uh, we can sort of tailor it to the delete screen and report the results from there. Um, let's go ahead and begin by adding a new tab to our form. And we will call this, uh, you know, just update. So if you right click on your tab control here, you can add a tab. and. Um, in the properties, we want to find the tab pages property and modify that collection. We'll click on tab page 5, and I'm just going to call this update for this tutorial. Select OK, and that creates a new tab for us to work with. Now we will add a few basic controls to this form. So I'm going to start with a command button, and I'll just that as is for the moment. And then I'm going to add two text boxes. Before I add the second one, I'm going to modify the properties of the first so we can just copy it. Um, our database fields, what we'll be doing is uh, making a basic uh, change password screen. So we'll be able to go to our database, find a user, and change the password of that user. So um, if we look at the database that I have here, uh, the table that we'll be updating is members, and we'll be updating the password field in that. And you'll notice that both of these have a length of 30, and we don't want to exceed that. So what I will do is change the max length on this text box to 30 characters. So find the max length property, change it to 30, and I'm going to go ahead and change the name of that while I'm here. I'm going to call this txt update user, and I will right click on that, select copy, and paste a new copy of it, or control C and control V, will work just fine. And uh, this has inherited the length, but we'll have to change the name of the password box. So we'll change this to txt change password. I'm sorry, let's make that update. You can make it whatever you want, really. 
And one last control option we want on this is uh, we want it to be a password field. When you type in passwords, you don't want it to type in plain text. So we go down to the use system password character property and change that to true. Finally, we're going to add a couple of labels to this just to make it official. The text on this label will be username. And I will copy that, paste another. I'm going to call this bottom one, uh, change the text to new password. All right. And that should be it. Looks like everything. Oh, what about our button? We're going to want to change that as well. So I'm just going to change the text and name on that. Change the text to change password. And I will um, change this to CMD update password. Sorry for the long names. Um, so now our form is ready to go. It's ready to uh, accept some code, but what I wanted to do first is jump back over to our SQL control class, and I want to change this sub into a function so it returns a value to us. So instead of uh, throwing back a generic message um, that isn't really relevant to the screen we're working on, we can set these messages from those screens based on the count. So I'm going to start by just erasing this message right here. And I'm going to say public function data update as integer, because we want to return a, an integer value. And now it doesn't like that, so we have to have at least one return value. If it executes all this code, nothing is changed, uh, or it just catches an exception, we want to return zero. Otherwise, um, we want to capture the change count uh, that is captured the same way from this method here. So. Um, I'm just going to say return change count. All right, and we are ready to go. Let's jump back over to our main form, find our change password button, and double click on that to create a click event. Now we can enter a little bit of form checking. Um, just to offer some constraints. So we'll say if txt update user dot text is not equal to blank, then go ahead and fire the next command. Else message box must provide a Username, our user to update. Sounds good to me. All right. If everything looks good in the update user text box, then we'll check the password. Uh, we'll just uh, throw in a basic security feature here. We'll say if txt update password dot text dot length is um, greater than five then proceed else um, message box Oops. password is too short it must be at least six characters. That sounds good to me. Alright, so if everything checks out in our form, then we can go ahead and proceed with our update. What I'm going to do, just so we can 
see this a little more easily is I'm going to create my update command string, my SQL, in just a string variable. So I'm going to say dim update string, or how about update cmd, update command as string equals. And here we'll ent uh, enter our command SQL text. So we'll say update. The table that we want to update is members. Put a space and then we will do a concatenation and we'll drop down to the next line if you use an underscore. Try to keep these kind of lined up here. And the next line will be set and the field we want to change is the password field. Set password equals uh, open single quote in the string and here we'll concatenate on our password text box. So we'll say and txt uh, update user dot text concatenate on a closing single quote add a space. If you don't add these spaces it'll uh, join the commands together in the SQL and then you'll it'll throw an error. So drop down to the next line again and this time we'll uh, add our filter. We want to filter by the username that we're searching for. So we'll say where username equals same uh, open single quote concatenate on the, the txt update user dot text. So we're going to filter our database results by the username so it only updates the user we want otherwise it would just go through the database and change every user's password to the same thing so and we'll close that single quote and be done with it so that is our update command uh, very standard SQL and now with that we can fire our data update function in our SQL control and return a value. So uh, we're, go we're going to say if SQL, that's our, uh, if you weren't following along in previous tutorials, that's our uh, SQL control instance that we created uh, for this class. If SQL dot um, data update, that's our function, and our command string will be update cmd, equals zero, then message box, the specified user could not be found. So if we tried to update a user, got zero results back from our update, then we know that it didn't find the user in the database, so it couldn't update it. Else, if it's greater than zero or any other value, then we can say message box password successfully changed. How about this? For user. Yeah, let's say for and txt update user dot text. And I'll throw a little period on the end of that. All right, so we should be good to go, except for I have a syntax error. What did I mess up on here? Oops, said else then. Hope you guys caught that before I did. I wasn't paying attention. All right, I'm going to save my project. So if everything is working now, we should be able to launch our project and update a user. Um, first, we can uh, find a user here using our old query tab to select star from members run the query 
Let's see. Let's update Super Dude. Um, first, we'll try one that doesn't exist. I'll, try, I'll say update the big boss. And we'll change his password to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Change password. Specified user cannot be found. Um, what if we picked Super Dude but set his password too short? Or no user at all. Ah, you must provide a user. So we'll say Super Dude. So it looks like all of our form uh, checking is working. And we'll just give him a ABC as his password. Password is too short, must be at least six characters. So all of our form checking is working properly. Uh, his current password is Super Dude. So I'm going to um, change it to ABC123 and see what happens. Password successfully changed. Rerun the query. It's still super dude, so we messed up somewhere. Rather, I messed up. Now, let me jump back over to my code. The password should have been set. Ah, uh, here we go. Set password equals txt update user. So I accidentally set the username dot text as the password text. So what I want to do is change that to txt uh, update password dot text, where the username is the user. what I get for rushing. <laughs> so select star from members and so super dude is password is super dude. Let's see if that fixed it. We want to change super dude to new password um, the big boss 17. Password successfully changed for super dude. Now we run the query, and it worked beautifully. So that's how easy it is to uh, update records using your form. Now, what you will probably want to do eventually is pre-populate these fields uh, with values from the database by querying through and setting the form text. Then you don't have to, you know, guess which users you want to update. You can either search for them or browse for them. Uh, and we may get into that in a future tutorial. But for now, uh, this is demonstrating pretty much exactly what, uh, what I wanted to show you, and that's just how to update. So I hope you found this uh, helpful. Oh, one other side note. If you want to update multiple fields, uh, separate them by commas like that at the end. Um, beyond that, we should be good to go. So I hope this has been helpful for you. Um, if you found it useful, feel free to share it with anyone else that you think might find it useful. I will catch you on the next run. Thanks. Bye-bye.